My name's Mark Bailey. I've been building guitars for 15 years or more. On the first day, we lay out the drawing. Lay out all the parts so that we know where everything's gonna go. And then we can use this to build the instrument. We don't want to go all the way in yet because there's still some sanding to do on the sides. And mm -hmm. we do the final fitting after the fretboard's glued on. Okay, so that is that's fantastic. That's all the hard work done. That's your three facets done. The next stage is to just blend it in, and I'll show you how we do that. So, Graham. Yep. Watch this. Go across the way like this. Every book will tell you to play along the grain. Yep. It's much harder. Okay. For some reason it's easier to go across like that. Perfect. You want to see the green vice? The green vice. Was it not on there, Josh? No, you're right. You, uh, what's, that was yesterday, Mark. Green vice, Sam Ryan. You want to see the green vice? Yeah, but it's off. the neck. Right. I'm nervous. Fucking arm. It is though, isn't it? The world's mental. Yeah. I try and stay out of it. That's my plan. Hey! Hey folks, back in the room. Hey look, we've got a new camera. Check this one. Look. Told you, didn't I? So now you can see a bit of close-up action when I'm working on stuff. So, um, yeah, bit of an update there. Up my nose cam. Let's uh, Carol, show you the show, show them the different angles, Carol. Overhead cam. Overhead cam now. Yeah. And then what's this one? That's the. That's a different thing. Yeah, you keep playing that film. Well, why is that there? One, two, and three, Carol. The first three. Smooth, eh, folks? Like Ain't we a smooth nose. operation? I don't like up your nose, Carol. Well, don't put it on up your nose, Carol. Then put it on this one. That's close up, cam. So this this one's for going close up, Carol. Mm. Yeah. I love the way you chop the top of my head off all the time. Oh. Right, let's stop playing with the cameras. I ain't got time for that. Um, let's have a recap. So, uh, what? I started this guitar on. When did I start this guitar, Carol? Last Wednesday. All right. Do you want to put it on my face because I'm talking? Started this guitar last Wednesday when I made the fretboard. That ain't right, is it? I made the fretboard before that. So I made this neck on Wednesday. We don't know what day it is, do we? That's the problem. <laughs> Does anybody know what day it is? Um, so uh, made the fretboard on the first session, part one. On part two, I made the neck. 
So as you can see, it looks pretty much like a neck. I glued the fretboard on, truss rods in. Um, so today, I've got my work cut out. Um, we was going to do it workshop Wednesday. It was going to take six to eight Wednesdays. And then Boris Johnson stuffed it all up again, didn't he? He said the end of lockdown was coming. So we decided to um, speed things up a bit. And we promoted workshop Wednesday to workshop weekend. So what follows is some madcap mayhem where I'm going to carve the neck, put some dots in, I'm going to put the frets in, and then we're going to think about the body. I'm going to ask you guys what would you prefer for the body. Um, so along the way I've been asking questions and folks have been answering in the comments about what features I'd like on the guitar. So last week they chose the Bailey headstock. Yes. Rock and roll. So um, this is the exact position where I left off um, last time. The fretboard was glued on. Um, so I'm going to carry on and carve the neck imminently very very soon um, if you haven't seen this before then you know it's quite possible um, that this will blow your mind so carving the neck is one of the things that a lot of people are quite worried about when they come on the course um, I'm going to show you just how it's not as difficult as people think so we run workshop courses People come here from all over the world to my little workshop four at a time and we build guitars from scratch. I've taught over 400 people how to do it here in the workshop face to face. Um, and then we, what we did was we filmed the whole process from start to finish. Um, and I've built a website around it called guitarmaking.co.uk. So we've got online courses. If you can't make it to the workshop, Obviously, all the workshop courses are closed down right now. Um, so the online courses is all that's happening. Um, hence me uh, coming online and guitar making live. Busking for a living. This is the new normal, folks. Matt, Matt time on us said it's Superb Saturday. Superb Saturday. Yay. I like that, I like that. Yeah, I'll we'll put that on the list. We've got... Um... Yeah, we're not sure whether to carry on with workshop Wednesdays or have it permanently as workshop weekends or super Saturdays or whatever you want to call it. So I don't know, let me know what you think guys in the comments. Um, I'm going to continue live streaming. So this is part three. There's going to be four parts to this series. So um, I'm going to finish this series tomorrow. Uh, actually there might be a fifth part. We might put um, an extra fifth part in as, um, a, as a bonus. Let's see how it goes. We were saying that um you know, final, you can do final tweaking on Workshop Wednesday next week. Yes, I might do a final setup on Workshop Wednesday next week. Carol's saying. So Carol's over there operating the um, the camera setup. Again. Right, Carol, go and okay. flick around the cameras again. Right. Don't take three hours this time. Do it quickly. Come on. Bash, bash, bash. What kind of ta well, that's a good camera. Look at that one. Wow, look how fast we are. That's rubbish. So we're going to get faster at switching the cameras, aren't we, Carol? I'll stick a boom up there. Rock and roll! So we've got, we've got Australia, Netherlands, we've got Denver, we've got Apache Nation, Arizona. Can you put my face on, please? Didn't work, did it? They're still looking at the bench. can't get the stuff so yeah folks from all over the world thanks for tuning in can't believe it uh, yeah YouTube's gone a bit mad with this live streaming um, like I said last week I am enjoying it so we are going to carry on doing it I'm not sure what days yet so leave us ideas what what day you'd prefer us to live stream in the comments um, that's my list of jobs for today so we'll see how far we get. I'm going to start with carving the neck. So have we got any questions before I start? And tell them how to deal with questions. Yeah, so it's going to be pretty frantic today. Probably the most frantic day yet because I've got a lot to do. Um, 
like I say, it was going to be spread over eight weeks, six to eight weeks, and now we're spreading it over three days. I don't know whose idea that was. But anyway, brilliant idea. Anything could happen, probably will. Um, I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to crack on and start carving the neck, unless we've got any questions before I start. But not at the moment, but tell them how we're going to deal with questions. Yeah, so it's, it's going to be mayhem. I'm going to be working fast. I've got a lot to do. So I'm not going to be answering questions all the time. Um, I'm going to ask for questions in between jobs. Or if I've got a particularly long job that's taken a long time, I might be able to answer questions as we go. All right? So leave your questions in the chat or in the comments and we'll get to them as soon as we can. All right, folks. Can you say hello to um, Colmenau and Ochenek? Yep, you just did. So let's get these clamps off. Different angle would be good, wouldn't it? Any day that ends in Y. I thought about um, we could do workshop weekends. We need a new uh, theme tune. I can think of one. Can you guys think of a theme tune for workshop weekends? I can. Mike Johnson in the Isle of Man and it's sunny. Hello Isle of Man. Carol. I'm changing angle. Right guys, I'm marking out now for carving the neck. So watch this. So this neck is going to have an arch on it here. I'm going to mark down here. I'm going to leave about the same width as the fretboard, mark a line all the way across. Do you want to zoom out a little bit there, Carol? Stop reading the comments and concentrate on the um, cameras, would you mind? I'm going to be Gordon Ramsay this session, sorry folks, but I'm never going to get it done unless we crack on. So it comes down from this point here to there. I'm going to do that on both sides. Down from the point to there. That's a concave curve towards the middle. Same as that. And then a round curve to join it up there. So this is our volute. Now I'm going to join, I'm going to come in from, from the bottom there, about a third, and draw a line all the way all the way down. Same on the other side. So what I've marked out is two facets. Can you see? I'm going to remove the material. between the two lines. Um, now I've drawn these lines on for you guys. You can actually do this without drawing the lines on. I, I do it without drawing the lines on normally because I can picture the lines in my head. Change the angle, Carol. So I'm working on this corner now. What I like to do is Clump it to a corner so I can get all the way around it. What's this angle like, Carol? Can you change to this one for a minute? Ooh, that's a bit freaky. Wow, look at that. Okay. Um, I'll just flip between the two then. Yeah, I'm going to start on the other side though. Look at that, folks. Right, it's always a bit tricky to get it going because it's quite sharp there. What I don't want to do is damage this area because it's going to leave a gap in the neck. Um, to be honest, we are going to cut a chunk off this later, so it'll be alright really. But getting it started is the tricky bit. It's always a bit difficult to work at the ends and the middle bit is easy. So it always takes a bit of while to get going at the end. I've got two different tools that I'm using. This is a Dreadnought 
file half round it's about 12 inches long and this is a half inch round file um what's this called this is called a surform <laughs> So this is one of those jobs that will make you a little bit out of breath. There aren't many with guitar making, but this is one of them. There we go. The idea is, what I'm trying to do is join up these two lines. The two lines that I drew on, I'm joining them up with a flat facet. Because it's impossible to watch both lines at the same time, what I do is I, I tip the file so that I can quickly get down to one line first. Let me demonstrate. So I've taken it to this line, ignoring this line. So now, now I'm going to do this one. So normally I would go all the way down, but I'm just doing this to demonstrate. Now I'm going to tip it too far this way so that I can quickly go down to the other line. And as you can see, I'm now left with just an, a lump in the middle. So it's really difficult to watch both lines at the same time unless you've got eyes on stalks on the side of your head, like... Um, People from Dal Mellington, apparently. Controversial. Might get a bit controversial today, folks. That's just what I've been told. I don't know if it's true. Oh, that's horrible and rude. No, they've got both eyes on one side of their face, haven't they? I thought that was contrary. So anyway, I can't see both lines at the same time. I quickly take it down to one line, quickly take it down to the other. And now it's easy just to take off the lump in the middle. We'll edit that bit out. It's not live, is it? So obviously the neck is going to end up round. It's impossible to just carve a nice round shape straight off the bat. So what we do is we carve facets. And I'm trying to make this facet the same width all the way along it's going to be nice and flat so let me just continue doing this one and then i'm going to repeat it on the other side so this is the job that i call carving the facets and the first um the first few jobs when we're carving the neck i refer to as bulk removal of material so i'm not worried about it being too perfect I'm just bulk removing material at this point. See me support in the neck there with my belly. kind of tool you can see there's teeth on it these, these teeth point forward so if I move it like this nothing happens if I move it like this then it comes out really rough so I have to push and slide at the same time so don't just slide don't just push push and slide Try and use as much of the rasp as you can. Should be able to get it nice and smooth like that. 
repeat on the other side. I'm going to use this one to get it going again. Let's move that. Can't really see that, can I? Maybe I'll move the clamp then. I don't need to, but it'll help you guys see a bit better. How's that? So again, I'm leaning one way. Take it down to the line. Lean the other way. Take it down to the line. Another tip with these tools. Don't be doing this. Don't bounce it. Keep it in contact with the wood as much as possible. sweat folks so that's that's the two side facets done next go on quick Roger Appleby says why not use a draw knife why not use a knife yeah I knew someone was going to say that So why not use a draw knife for a spoke shave? Yeah, um Well, yeah, I've used that in the past. You can use one if you've got one, um, but you have to keep sharpening it. That's the main reason. Sharpening a spoke shave is a skill in itself, um, which you have to learn. You don't need to do that if you've got a rasp. Um, rasp is much easier for beginners. Take my word for it. Um, we used to get the... Uh, can't put my hands on my spoke shave right now. Um, but we only used to get it out in the work, in the um, factory when we were trying to show off. So if we had visitors come round, we'd get the spoke shaves off. It looks clever, but um, it's harder to use. If you've got one and you're good at using it, by all means use it. But for beginners, I'm aiming this at beginners, you see. So for beginners, it's much easier to use something like this, a surf form. Okay, so we're gonna do the third facet now. We might need to change the camera angle. So I'm measuring it here and here. No, I don't. Be all day. So I've got 26 mil. I'm going to carve it down to 21 to 23. So it's 23 mil here, 21 mil here. I'm going to measure it there and there, not too close to the ends because it's got to curl up at some point. And this has got to be flat, so I've got a ruler somewhere. Oops, I've got a ruler to check that I'm carving this flat. Okay, and I've got my calipers. 
Um, you can get very cheap versions of these, you don't need to have digital ones. But it is very handy. So this is the third facet. I'm carving the top facet down to depth. So this would be where if you want a thin neck you would go thinner. I'm going to aim for 21 and by the time I've sanded it it will probably finish about 20 and a half. It's always about 2mm fat at this end. no point in measuring it unless it's flat. If it's not flat I'm going to get a rough block with some 60 grit on it, sand it flat. But for now I don't know if you can see the, the measurements on that. 24 at the moment. 24 and 24. So I want to make it a bit thinner this end. So I'm going to show you how we taper it. It's dead simple, I just do a short stroke and then I do a longer stroke so this bit's been hit twice. And then three times. Four times. It's a little bit high there. Check the measurements. That's, uh, can you see that? So let's say 22.8. 22.8 there. And what's that? Oh, it's, it's not that important. I'll read it out. It's 24.8, Carol. Guys. 24.8. So I still got about. Um, 1.8 mil off both sides. So that's fairly even now. that a rub with a flat block. Check it's nice and flat. It looks pretty good to me. And then check the measurements again. I'm still at 22 and 24. I'm just going to double check that it's reading zero at zero because it's easy to um, it's easy to accidentally press the button and then you get a false reading. Whoa, making me feel drunk. The numbers aren't showing up, are they? I can see it. Okay. 22, just over. I want to take another mill off. That's 23.8. So another mill, roughly. Let's tighten that up a bit. So 
this is the important one folks facet number three is the one that sets the thickness of your neck if you go too far obviously you can't put it back on so it's always best to err on the safe side there's a few extra tricks that I'll show you in the on the full course haven't really got time to show you everything right now but um, I can't be far away now so I've got 21.5 23.5 another half a mil same again So I've kind of learnt over the years that one pass will, will be about half a mil. Um, you know, if, you, if you're not sure at home, you've got to just do a pass, measure it, see how much comes off each time. You usually need to do a little bit extra at the ends. Just to keep it straight. It's very easy to work in the middle, but it's more difficult at the ends, as I said earlier. So there, that's pretty straight. I'll give it a little rub with a block. Sorry about the shaky folks. Sorry about the wobbly bench. The cameras kind of take the shake out, so it's not so bad. Okay, so that's my third facet done. What you might notice now is that the first two facets don't look as neat as they did before. Can you see it's now thinner this end, thicker this end. So I need to refine the facets. So this job is called refining the facets. I'm just going to go over the first two and repeat what I did the first time. Um, doesn't take long this one, very quick. We've done all the hard work with the bulk removal of material and then carving the top facet so now we're just refining the facets easy peasy If they're a bit lumpy bumpy we can go over them with a block. Now the more highly figured your wood is the harder this is it comes out more lumpy bumpy you might have to do more work with the block. Highly figured flame maple for instance. There we go, look at that. So hopefully you can see three nice crisp facets. We're picking out the facets. So obviously the neck is going to be round, but it all comes from how accurate you can make these th three facets. Well effectively we've got five facets now because we've got the sides, these two and the top one. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Next stage is to carve more facets. So carve extra facets halfway between there and there. 
halfway guys between there and there is about there so this one I'm going to carve just until I touch the fretboard I'm going to keep the angle the same all the way down same on the other side and next we go back to halfway between this facet and the top so about there I'm going to carve another little facet I don't want to carve it too big because I don't want to go right into the middle I um, don't want to carve right into the middle look how quick that one was same on this side that already to me I don't know if you can see that it already looks pretty round so here's a scraper blade can feel there's a little burr on this side there's a little burr you can skip this job but if you've got a scraper it certainly helps works like a miniature plane What's a burr? so um a burr is where it's been filed and the, the metal curls under a bit I'm gonna do full length strokes and then tip it full length stroke tip it kind of works like a miniature plane takes off all the rough marks just make sure you don't hit the same bit twice I'm going to go all the way to the middle and back again all the way to the middle and back again then obviously I'm going to repeat that on the other side Okay, the last trick, the old shoe shine trick. Scribble all over it. And then shoe shine fashion. I always go across the top first. Make sure you don't ride up over the, the loops or ride up here. And then down the sides. Obviously you should wear a mask for these kind of jobs. Um, I've been trying to preserve my mask for obvious reasons. This one's about eight weeks old now. But it's better than nothing. So that should be straight, beautiful, yeah try that on some of your necks at home folks, you might be surprised just how bad they are. Um, I could continue with that until it was perfect but there's no need, that's good enough. There's still just a few pencil marks there but I'm not sanding the neck, I'm just shaping it. This is just rough shaping. So as you can see, it looks looks okay. Um, the heel still looks rough, and the volute at the end still looks rough. So let's deal with that now. What I'm going to do is just tidy up around the headstock first with my sander. Um, I'm going to cheat and use my uh, powered sander. You're not likely to have this at home. You could do it just with. Um, 
a drum, uh, what, what would we call it, a broomstick with sandpaper wrapped around it. But um, I've got this. So the question was, um, EP was quite surprised to see that you uh, carved the neck with the fretboard on and he said, why, why do you do that and does it not, is there not any potential damage to the fretboard? Well I do carve into the fretboard slightly. Um, what, what, what it's a lot more difficult to carve the neck with the fretboard off unless you're oh. using CNC machines. So it all comes down to what kind of tools you've got. It's easier for the CNC guys to just machine a square lump of wood, press go, and they come back and they've got a neck that's pre-made and then they just glue their truss rod and fretboard on top. But for us, it's easier to work with square lumps of wood um, as much as possible because we're working by hand. So I'm using this Close enough. Cause I'm gonna um, I'm gonna be sanding this later. That's just rough shaping. So yeah, he says. Uh, how long has that been there? He says. Um, he says he works by hand, and then he turns the machine on. Um, yeah, making guitars by hand. <coughs> it's interesting. What constitutes by hand? So I think by law, it's um, if somebody's actually moving the workpiece by hand, holding the workpiece, then it counts as being made by hand. Even if you're using power tools. So I'm clamping my neck down to the bench. Can't see it, but I am. So that I can carve the headstock volute. So I'll start by removing this step. And you can see the step there. This step, so I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna take any off this end, just that end. So I'm gonna be left with a nice curve. What I could do to stop it moving is put some gripper mat underneath it. I was hoping I could get away with it, but. It's Moving too much. Gripper mat. It's just an old yoga mat.
carve into the back of my headstock. So I'm going to leave a little bit there for the sander. I could use the finer rasp just to get a little bit closer. Now, now I'm going to tidy up this lump here and the same on the other side. So it's just the same. <laughs> the same as when we were carving the facets imagine this facet we're just gonna um, we're gonna tip it to take the lump off and then just there's a lump there and then I'm just gonna roll it round backwards and forwards until there's no lumps I'm going to do the same on the other side, which you probably won't see. Let's see if it will reach to there. Any good? Mm. No. no, it's not bad, is it? No, Very rough carved, ready for sanding. Let's see if I can get you a better view of that. I'm going to do something similar at the other end now. Tidy up this end. I might decide to do some adjustment on this end after it's joined. Um, after I've seen what it looks like when it fits into the body, I might want to adjust this. But for now, I'm going to finish it off. Just by taking the facets off again. Knocking the sharp corners off. And then rolling it round. Not looking for perfection at this point because as I say I'm gonna double check these after it's um, fitted into the body so that'll do ready for sanding but first I'm gonna put the dots and frets in so that is my next job folks dots and frets do we have any questions on the neck carve while I'm setting up for that. Um, someone said, did you used to watch Blue, Blue Peter when you were a boy? Yeah, I did, yeah. Blue Peter. Used to love it. Blue Peter. But I always thought they cheated when they got one out that they made earlier. That's cheating, isn't it? Tea's very important. Have a sip. Guitar makers live on tea. Side dots. Actually, that's partly why we've we've avoided. You know, we've we've always had to make from scratch, haven't we? Try to What's that? People. Well, that thing about this one I made earlier. They never made. They very rarely made anything from scratch live, did they? No. And we always try to encourage people to do things. Yeah, we didn't want to be like just a kit where where we just supplied you with just a kit that was all pre-made. I wanted you to be able to build a guitar from scratch and the thing is once you can build one you can build ten. So um, we're over here now. Mike, Mike Habit says he never saw Valerie using power tools. 
And um, before I put the dots in, folks, I'm going to make sure that the fretboard is roughly the right thickness. Um, so if I if I level my fretboard now, then I'll be able to mark exactly halfway. If I put my dots in first and then level my fretboard, they might not be on centre still. Okay, so I'm going to just do the um, the fretboard. What I'm doing is um, radiusing the fretboard and I'm checking that it's straight. So here's the thing. There's actually no such thing as perfectly straight. So what we aim for is very slight gap in the middle. Now if I can you see that straight edge pivoting? There's a good advert there. These excellent tools from these folks, but you can get them from Tone Tech in the UK. I'm not affiliated to any of these guys, so I'm just going to turn that around. <laughs> but I use a straight edge to find humps, you see. Now, can you see that that's pivoting? You can actually see there's a little gap at this end as well. But what I'm doing is I'm looking for humps, and I'm going to remove the humps. All I do is I put my hand where the hump is and press down. Um, I was asked last week how we put the relief into the fretboard. So some people make their fretboards perfectly straight and that's absolutely fine, except for there's really no such thing. If there's any slight humps on it at all, if there's a hump here, when you play here, um, it's gonna buzz. So, um, if it's a hump here and you play here, it's going to buzz on the hump. So we need to make sure there's no humps. A long low spot is okay. That's what we call relief. So we're going to aim for a little gap in the middle where the ruler is. It's called relief. So one way to achieve that is if we tighten the truss rod up, that will bend the neck up. It will bend the neck this way. Can you can I have a different angle? Cheers. So when we put the strings on, the neck bends this way. So the truss rod is to bring it back. The truss rod will make it hump in the middle. So if we deliberately make it hump in the middle by tightening the truss rod and then level it by rubbing it on the board, then when we back the truss rod off again, it'll have that little bit of relief. Hopefully that made sense. Another one of the jobs Again, if you've had your fretboard made by machine, you can probably skip this job. But I always like to do it anyway. Because there's no guarantee that when you glued your fretboard on, that it glued on perfectly straight, you see. Here's a little trick, I'm gonna scribble all over it. And I always draw a line down both sides as well. So if I'm leaning on one side, um, I'll be able to tell because it'll clean up quicker. So I'm going to try and do it evenly, I'm pressing my weight in the middle because I'm trying to get a little bit of relief. So this is a radius block. You can do it without the radius block, but it, it takes a lot longer. As you can see, I've still got a bit of pencil there and there at the end. Almost there, look. That says 90% there. But it's always those last few percents that take all the time. So, um, if you've got a question, Carol, while I'm doing this, that'd be good. Right, um, Marcel, um, in Aston West, how do you make different net profiles, like C, D, V, profiles? So to carve different profiles, basically it comes down to those first two facets that we carved. If you carve a V profile, you make those two facets bigger. And if you make a C profile, you make a facet at the top here, and then you end up with a C. Oh my 
nice there look just a bit at the ends so what I can't do is I can't lean on the ends to cheat because that will just def defeat the object uh, it will still be low if I lean on it so what I've got to do is keep carry on leaning in the middle the middle is where it's high um, test with a straight edge. Uh, can you see that? There's no high spots. Can you see the tiny gap in the middle? Mm -hmm. If I do that it exaggerates it. It's tiny. That's with the ruler straight look, you can't really see the gap. But you can see that the ruler's not catching. So we're not talking about a huge gap. Like if I bend the neck, we're not talking about that. The neck's as straight as you can get it, but just with no high spots. So I can't see any high spots on that now. My neck is pretty much the right shape. I've just got a little bit of pencil at the end to clean up still. So another go, one more go, should do it. So on the course, I'll show you how to do it with and without this radius block. But certainly if you're making more than one guitar, I would highly recommend that you get yourself one of these. Done. That was 60 grit. Now I'm going to change it to 80 grit and repeat. So as I go through the grits, each one is designed to take out the scratches from the previous one. So it will only take 30 seconds, maybe a minute. cleaned up nice. That's 80 grit. So I won't go any finer than that um, if I'm going to put any inlays in. We'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to cheat. Yeah. What I'm going to do folks is I'm not going to put any inlays in the front. We're on such a tight um, time scale now that um, I can halve the amount of time it takes to do the inlays by only doing side dots. Now, some people don't like front dots. A lot of the jazz guys, anyone who comes from a classical background, they don't like front dots. But um, I would certainly say most guitar players certainly need the side dots. We can live without the front ones, but the side ones are essential. So I'm definitely going to do the side dots. Um, if I was going to do front dots, it's exactly the same technique, just a different size drill and inlays. So I'm going to do two mil dots downside and, uh, and that means my fretboard's done. So I'm going to carry on sanding it. So that was 80 grit, I'm going to do 120 and then 240 grit. So the number refers to the number of particles per, I think it's square centimetre or whatever, per unit area. So P60 has got 60 grains per unit area and P220 has got 220 grains per unit area. So it's finer. So the larger the number, the finer the paper. Question? question? Let's have a question. Tony Popper, in Australia, saying... Hi Tony. What about fall away on the last frets? Yeah, fall away on the last frets, that was something that we would worry about 
during the final setup doing the fret dress because the sort of relief I'm talking about is so small if you put too much relief in then you'll end up with you won't be able to put any fall away in because your fretboard will be um, your fretboard will be curving. If we put a ruler on about where the tenth fret is, we should ideally have a little bit of fall away. Can you see that? It just happens naturally if you do it the way I've just done it or the way I show you on the course. Can you see that? I'm holding it at the 10th fret, holding the ruler at the 10th fret there. And then a little bit fall away. But at the same time, no high spots. See that? So we're only talking about thousandths of an inch. Don't get too hung up on it. Just try and get your neck as straight as you can but make sure there's no humps. You can probably imagine how much time this radius block saves. A lot. Okay, another question? Yeah. Uh, Deej, um, up in the north of England is saying... Just hey Deej. Does the fretboard need to be hardwood? Is there any type of wood that shouldn't be used? Yeah, the fretboard's the most important part of the um, guitar. So make sure you get a good quarter sawn piece of hardwood. Ebony or rosewood are obviously the best choices. Any dark coloured hardwood will do, but I would say try and make sure you get a quarter sawn piece. If it's a light coloured piece of wood, um, then you you need to spray it, otherwise it gets dirty too fast. Um, like your your old vintage strats, one piece maple necks, maple fretboards, they're always lacquered fretboards, which adds another several levels of difficulty. Yeah, there's millions. There's millions too many DJ to list. It shouldn't be used. Yeah. Don't use anything unless it's... Um, I would only use stuff that's... I would honestly, for fretboards, it's the most important part of the guitar. Don't use any old piece of wood. I would go to a proper guitar maker supplier and get a choice piece for my fretboard. How about a compound radius 10 Super yeah, you can do a compound radius, you just have to use a flat block or you can use shorter radius blocks um, and you have to have radius gauges. So here's a radius gauge. That's my 12 inch one. If I check that on my, because I'm using a 12 inch block, you can see that that matches. Um, so I would maybe go from a, from a 10 inch to a 12 inch or nine to twelve or something like that you just have to have different radius things and you have to get good at knowing where to remove the wood from so wherever the thing touches that's where you need to remove the wood from um, so with the, with two different radius gauges and a straight edge you can put in a compound radius it just takes a lot more time that's as much as i'm going to do i've sanded that now with fine paper job done Carol likes to switch the cameras on me. Well done, Carol. Doing good though, eh? So that's the neck carved and the fretboard is the right shape. Now what I'm gonna do is do the side dots. As I was saying, if I did the side dots first and then had to do a lot of work on the fretboard. The fretboard might change shape and the dots would be in the wrong place. Yeah, what can I do? 
Okay, side dots, let's get these in. Here's my pokey thing. If in doubt, tidy up. Pokey thing's gone missing. This one. Yeah. Let's just quickly mark um, these dots. So three, five, seven, nine. I'm going to put two on the twelfth, and then repeat three, five, seven, nine. All right, you can't see this at all. So I've got my two frets and my dot's going to go in the middle. I'm lining up my nice round number like a hundred and then I can mark it right in the middle. I mark it nice and gentle and then I can double check it this way as well. Now to be honest, I use my guitar maker's eye and get it straight this way. Let's have a bit more tension on that. So you, it's quite surprising actually, um, some of these jobs that you think are going to take ages take hardly any time. And then silly jobs like putting the dots in, which you think, oh that will just be a quick job, takes ages. Now if anybody's got a clever jig for doing this, then let us know how. Um, I've come up with a few ideas in the past, but the problem is, as soon as you change the scale length, it doesn't work anymore. So you could have a jig, but you'd have to have one for every scale length. Unless you make the same guitar all the time. That's how your factories get away with it. They make the same guitar over and over. So they can jig up for everything. Or CNC. So on the 12th fret I go 4mm either side of the centre. Measure twice, cut once folks. Get it right first time. That was the motto of the factory. That should be remain nameless. That was our motto, get it right first time. We didn't always. So I need to point out to you guys that um, the online courses are edited, so it's a lot slicker than this. And the beauty of the online stuff is, is all there at your fingertips, so you can skip forward to the bits you need.
So I'm just making little adjustments as I go back down them. What I can do is nudge, if it's not quite in the right place, I can just nudge it into position. Double check then. So three, five, seven, nine, two on the twelfth, and then it repeats. So fifteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-one. Lovely. That'll do. So I'm just going to go straight ahead and drill them with a two mil hole. flag to show me how deep I'm going. It's worn out. Now you mention it, I'm going to have to fix it, aren't I? So the tape's to tell me how deep I'm going, but I'm only using it as a guide. I'm not going all the way down to the tape. The problem was if I touch the tape, it probably nudges up a bit and then I end up going deeper on the next one. By the time I get to the end, I'm going way too deep. So I always stop before I hit the tape. So you'd be surprised how difficult it is, guys, to get all these holes in a perfectly straight line. you don't get them all exactly perfect don't beat yourself up too much it does take a bit of practice when you're doing things by hand like this so it's an ebony fretboard and a mahogany neck that I'm working on I think this needs a bit of oil Gone really stiff. Right, I'm going to oil my voice as well, Darren, if you're watching. There you go. Let's oil my squeaky voice while I'm at it. Fixed, there you go. Thanks Germany for tuning in. Last one. It's always the last one where it goes wrong folks. Slow down on the last one. Take extra time. As you can guarantee that's the one that's going to go wrong. Keep turning it as you pull it out and that lifts the chips with it. There we go. Now I'm using... I'm using white plastic for this. It's one of the few times where I think it's okay to use plastic. I don't like plastic. I don't like using plastic on guitars. But in this case, um, because it's white plastic, it's exactly the same colour, everyone's the same colour. Um, they all stand out the same. The trouble with, um, I like Mother of Pearl as well for dots, but they all look different from different angles. So yeah, this is fiddly. I'm going to use something just to make sure the glue goes into the hole. And then snip it off, push it into the hole, snip it off. Next one. I can probably get the glue in 
quite a few holes. I don't have to do it one at a time. When I used to work in the factory, I used to do six necks at once. I used to put the glue in six necks and then go through and put the dots in. I guess I used to be a lot more nimble than I am now. So I'm using a pokey thing to make sure that um, there's glue gone right into the hole. If you can't get the, this is just two mil plastic rod. If you can't get it in the hole, then you could just snip it at an angle. Make a sharp point, then it goes into the hole easier. Check out the camera angle. Look at that. Side dots, almost done. <laughs> Dee just asked, how do you put in LED fret markers on the screen? <laughs> how you put them in? You, you ask Sims. <laughs> what you do is you contact Sims and you say, can you put LEDs in my guitar, please? Um, this is accelerator for super glues, so this will make the glue go. That's um, that glue's dry now, ready to work on. I'm not going to bother cleaning these up though, because I'm going to put the frets in first and clean it all up at the same time. So that's my dots done. Next, frets. people have said that they haven't put they've, when, they've, when they've done side dots they haven't put them in perfectly straight but they haven't lost sleep over it. <laughs> Takes the practice. Frets is wonky. <laughs> it suits his playing he says. Well there you go they can admire my frets now. Admire my dots. Do they look straight to you? My little fret bending tool here. You need about two and a half strips. Um, well, I'll turn it down, then you can see it, eh? How many hours a day do you work usually? Loads. Mark has no idea of time. I never stop. 23 and a half. I'm always working. If I'm not in the workshop, I'm working on the website. If I'm not working on the website, I'm working on the videos. And if I'm not working on the videos, I'm in the workshop. <laughs> so it's a never ending cycle. I'm afraid it never ends. So um, that's that. That was made by um, a guy on the course, Dave Terry.
best fret snips money can buy. These are from um, Tone Tech. Awesome snips. They've got a little soft bit so you don't um, scratch your top on your acoustic guitar when you're snipping your frets off. These are ace. My favourite snips. I'm just going to snip off the last little bit because it, d it doesn't bend that, my um, fret bender. I'm going to prepare some fret wire. So I'm going to cut these frets roughly to length. What size of fret wire do you use, Max? Max? This is just medium fret wire. People can specify anything they want if they're buying a guitar from me or if they're on the course. I'm cutting them about three millimetres oversize. Where else can you get this, folks? So as you can see, I'm leaving them in place on the neck. It's just so I don't lose my position. When I've cut them all, I'm going to take them out and line them all up in this jig just to hold them. Put them in one at a time. Managed to get a bit of glue on the fretboard there. I'll clean that up in a sec. Always cut from side to side, never top to bottom. If you cut this way, top to bottom, we have a close-up, Carol. Oh, don't worry about it. Always cut from side to side, because if you cut from top to bottom, it mashes a bit of the tang. This is the tang, the bit that sticks down. Can't see anything. Always cut from side to side. Never top to bottom. Always like that, never like that. Done. Now I'm going to take them out and line them up in this thing. I'm going to do a last little clean up of the fretboard and clean out the fret slots. So we need to prepare the fretboard for fretting now. Got our frets. Prepare the fretboard for fretting. I got. I managed to get a bit of glue on the front, so I'm going to take that off first. That's it done. And now I need to clean out the, um, the fret slots. So these fret slots are full of dust. Which doesn't help us. Theron's uh, tuned in. Hey Theron. Theron and Joe. I said I'd say hello to Theron and Joe. Joe was our youngest. Uh... Yeah, Joe was our youngest ever student in the course. He came when he was 
12, I think. He was actually 11. So you have to be, you can't come on your own if you're that age. You obviously you have to come with um, one of your parents or guardian. Um, so Joe came with his dad Theron, and they both made guitars on our course. And very well they did too. Joe's So I'm just gently clamping the neck, making sure that it's not bending. And I'm gonna use my fret saw here just to take out any dust or glue that's in the fret slot. So more often than not, we've got inlays in the fretboard and so we end up with um, the the dust from the inlays and the glue going into the fret slots. So this job can take a lot longer than it's taking me now. You can obviously um, you can decorate your guitar. There's all kinds of specifications and options you could choose. What I'm demonstrating here is basic simple ones to get you started. Cheers folks. Yep, you're doing good, Carol. I do move fast. Okay, we could use a Hoover vacuum cleaner. Um, the most important thing is to check the depth slots. So I've got a tool here which I use um, to actually check that the depth, the depth of the slot. Can we have a close up please, Carol? You could make one of these, I'll tell you how to do that. I'm just gonna quickly check these are okay. A bit borderline actually some of them. Not quite deep enough. They're just deep enough. So the depth of these slots, ideally they want to be about 10 to 20 percent deeper than the actual fret. So you want when the fret goes in, you want just a tiny gap underneath it. You can check that with your actual fret. I'm using this tool here, which has got lines marked on it. I can compare to the fret. So compare that to the hole. I think they'll be all right. Just yep. Could just give them one stroke just to be sure. There's still a bit of dust coming out. Okay. Next job. I'm still preparing the fretboard. Asking about, um, have you ever done something like the Tree of Life or something complex? Yeah, of course. I think the most complex one we did was probably the Dragon. If you go to the Bailey blog and type in Tony the Dragon, you'll find it. Um, that was about 300 pieces. Yeah, we've done all kinds of fancy inlays. Um, Obviously there wasn't time to do it on this build. I'm working on an inlay course to go on the website. 
it's all filmed it just needs editing um, how to do inlays where I do um, it's not a tree of life but kind of similar things to that Yeah, if you go to the Bailey blog, I think there's actually a category for inlays where you could just type in the word inlays and I'm sure you'll find lots of stuff that we've done. A thistle and a rampant lion. Lion rampant. Uh, all sorts of stuff. I enjoy doing inlays. Um, sometimes I'll make the inlay myself, other times, depending on how busy I am, sometimes I'll have the inlay made. There's a guy called Mike Reed, Small Wonder Music, smallwonder.co.uk. He's the UK inlay specialist. He's, that's where I get all my material from for inlays. And he'll also make them up for you. If you send him a drawing. Again, I'm not affiliated in any way, but these people that I mentioned, they're all um, kind of my friends, really. My suppliers, but also we've become friends over the years. I'd like to think. So what I was doing there was just filing in a wee groove. Carol, can I have a close up please? Yeah. A little V groove on the fret. So this is a triangular file. It's blurry. Mm. Triangular file. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And I've got it point sized down into the hole. Point down into the hole. Just to create a little V on the top of the frets and um, makes the frets go in easier. And if you ever have to take them out, it makes them come out easier. So I'm now I'm ready to put my frets in. Need something to rest the neck into guys. So I've got this. You can use a bean bag or there's all kinds of things you can do. Suggestions are all on the course. I'm going to use this. When you're, when you're putting your frets in, bounce is your enemy. We don't want anything to be bending or bouncing. So I'm going to use a block underneath so that it's solid. And the first few frets on the heel there are solid anyway. So we can do these ones. These are the easy ones and then it gets a bit more tricky for these. So let's start with the easy ones. Any old hammer will do. This is not my favourite one but it will do. Any soft faced hammer. You could even use just any normal ordinary hammer. I'm going to use the yellow side not the rubber side. We don't want it to bounce. So soft faced hammer. I'm not going to clamp the neck, I'm just going to hold it loosely, press it down firmly, make sure it's not bouncing. And then what we do is we hit the ends in first, and then backwards and forwards across the middle. Let's see if we can get a good shot of that. I like to sit down when I'm doing this. I've got a stool so that I can watch it at eye level. I can watch it going in. I'm going to get these in as accurate as possible. Carol, what? can you zoom in a bit? Ends in first and then backwards and forwards across the middle. So 
So the idea is you put the ends in first and then as you tap the middle in, the ends kind of come out a bit. And these little tangs, I don't know if you can see the tangs. So the tangs dig a little sideways hole so it can't come out. That's the idea anyway. So ends in first and then backwards and forwards across the middle. Make sure you tip the hammer to match the radius. Don't tip the hammer so that you hit the fretboard though. I'm going to whack these in as fast as I can now folks. They can be pressed in, I've also got fret press. But I'm trying to show you guys basic methods with basic tools that you'd have at home. As far as possible. Um, if you're new, then you might be wondering how you're going to get hold of all these massive amount of tools that you're going to need. But you don't need a massive amount of tools. Check out my other video essential tools for guitar making and you'll see actually you don't need that many Sometimes, now if this fretboard was bound, then I would fill the frets with um, wood glue, either white wood glue or tight bond yellow glue, um, so that the frets would be glued in as we go. Using this method, I can run super glue in underneath. That was better angle before. I can run super glue underneath the frets. That's what I'm going to do. So yes, the frets kind of are glued in, but it's much neater to do it this way. Oops. Let's get them in. So if I'm binding the fretboard, I'll glue the frets in because the binding prevents you from running glue underneath, you see. But in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill the hole underneath the fret with super glue and it runs through. locks the fret down into place and fills the hole at the same time. Lost some. While it's quiet, I want to just mention that um, I never put music on any of my videos. That's so that you can put your own music on. Put your favourite music on in the background while you're working. So there we go. That's not bad, is it?
pretty neat. I'm not going to snip them off yet. So now's the time I'm going to run the super glue underneath. Now I'm going to just give it a quick check with a straight edge. That's about as good as it gets folks. There's no, there's no high spots. No frets are sticking up. So that's about as good as I can get. Um, it's probably not perfect, but it's it's pretty damn good. Carol, we can only see the bottom of my face. Looking at your neck. No, I don't want my face. Down, down. <laughs> Thank you. It's those half in shots where it's neither in nor out. Somebody's asked if you, uh, this is Diego shock, says if you, if you didn't use a fret wire bender tool, is that a bad idea? Can you, I guess he's saying, can you do it without a fret bending tool? Yes, you can do it without a fret bending tool. Let me show you. Um, have I got a fret straight piece? Yes. Here's a straight piece. Um, So I'm going to show you how we bend frets if you haven't got a fret bender. So you cut your fret to length first. And then watch this. So I grab it at the end and I bend it three times towards the middle. Watch this. When I say bend, I'm just flexing it. Flex, flex, flex. Same the other side. Flex, flex, flex. Takes a bit more skill to do it without kinking it, but there you go. Curved fret. It wants to be slightly more curved than the fretboard. Okay. So now I'm going to run super glue underneath the frets. I'm going to try very hard to keep it off the front of the fretboard. It's actually dripping out the back. This is the super runny stuff. You can use the medium This is running right through. I'm going to do the same from the other side. Accelerator. And repeat on the other side. Yeah, you can use any super glue for this. It doesn't have to be. Um, it doesn't have to be this. Done. So that glue is now dry. I can go ahead and snip the fret ends. Again, always cut from side to side. Notice I'm not holding the neck. If you hold the neck or clamp the neck in any way, that's how you would pull the fret loose.
Yeah, you should be wearing goggles for this, guys, because the um, the little bits of metal can ping around the workshop into your eyes. Jago shot that says thank you and great video by the way. Cheers folks. I've done that thing again. What have you done? Now I'm going to put a little angle on the top. That's a 35 degree angle. bits of glue there well I've got the worst of it with a file and I'm going to finish it off with a sanding block <coughs> to be honest I'm not going to worry too much about it because I still need to fit this into the body we're going to need to do some work here here um, to fit this into the body. Um, body doesn't exist yet so we'll do that later. But just a little clean up to show you, Give you a quick look what it looks like. shot of my hoses there. Okay guys, that pretty much is my neck. That's the neck pretty much finished, apart from sanding and fitting into the body. That, I think we can agree, is a guitar neck. So the next thing to do is to start making the body. Um, I'm going to let you guys choose which body we use. I've got a piece of mahogany and a piece of older. So here's my piece of mahogany. That's very nice. Should we give it a tap?
piece of mahogany, piece of older, older lighter colour. Um, I think this piece is slightly lighter as well. Yeah, it doesn't ring like the mahogany, does it? Which just shows you guys. Yeah, it just does show you, doesn't it? Um, so one vote for mahogany. Uh, older's really nice if you want to paint it. It's got a really fine grain and the paint doesn't sink into it. Um, I'm going to just quickly tidy my bench while you all vote for mahogany. Yeah, um, I get asked that a lot. Does it make me sad when my guitars leave my workshop? Uh, no. <laughs> it makes me happy because it means I can make another one. Um, it used to, the, f the first few was painful, but um, as you go on, if I didn't let them go, I'd have a lot of guitars um, and I'd be very poor. <laughs> I'd have a lot of guitars and nowhere to put them. So uh, no, it actually makes me happy when they leave the workshop because I know then I know I can make another one. <laughs> Let's put the neck to one side. Going to have a little tidy up while you guys decide. Yeah, you're asking about my most expensive guitar. So Carol's gonna, we've got a little um, this isn't the one. slideshow, I think, this, of yeah, uh, a similar one. It's not the actual one, but the same model. This is a baritone Preston Reed signature edition. Carol's gonna just um, show you some pictures of while I finish clearing my bench. We're gonna start making the body after this. So there you go, that was um, the uh, the Magic Rosette. This is Heather Gem. I'm the only guitar maker on the planet in the known universe who's allowed to use this stuff. It's made from real Scottish heather. And there's a very, very limited supply. It's made by a jewellery maker and he's never let anybody else use it before um, except me. So I'm very honoured to be able to use it. I only use it on my very, very high-end guitars, like the Preston Reed Signature Edition. Look at that. Beautiful. Expensive custom guitar. Yeah, so these are like expensive. Hot property. Okay, let's make some more mess. Grip them up. I'm going to wait until the camera changes because it's 
pointing at my face again. I'm on strike. <clears throat> Piece of mahogany. Yeah, you I've just assumed the vote was mahogany. It was close though. Was it close? It was 8-6. Eight, 8-6. Six. Eight, six. Mahogany wins it. This is actually a one-piece mahogany. It's a bit special. That's probably why it sounds so good. It's very it's cool Somebody to say. Quarter... Yeah, oh, Mostly they are, yes. This is an unusual one that I dug out this morning. Especially for you guys. Gorgeous, eh? So, there's no centre line on it. Usually we would use the glue line as the centre line. But I've got a centre line on my pattern, which we're going to transfer. Now, I did have the crazy idea of letting you guys choose the body shape. But, especially down to the um, extremely limited time that we've allowed ourselves to do this build. Um, I decided it was probably safer for me to choose the body shape. Yeah, flying V was one of the requests. Yeah, because you were going to choose a flying V, weren't you? And they're a nightmare. They would, it would have taken me longer. So. A request for PRS. Yeah, OK then. All right, let's go for a double cut. Shall we? Let's go for the band double cut. So this is a shape that I drew myself out of my own head. Obviously inspired by a certain other guitar maker. I mean actually, it was actually inspired by the, the Eggel Berlin, the Patrick Eggel Berlin, not the PRS. But I made um, a few of these guitars. I made one and we took it to a show at the NEC. My first show at the NEC and the, um, the photographers from the magazines refused to take pictures of it because they said it looked too much like a PRS. It's a beauty. And the PRS fan club actually um, wrote a really great article. Did they? Yeah. Oh, I don't know now. I've gone off rails. Because I was going to just do one pickup. I can't do one pickup with this guitar. This is a calf top guitar. We haven't got time to carve it. So, what shall I do? I'm going to stick to the plan, folks. I'm going with my shape. Because we haven't got time to carve. I haven't got time to carve it, so sorry, whoever was acting for the PRS. And you only want next time, next time I'll do the carved top double cut. But this time, it's going to be this one. The Bailey Bandsman. I'll tell you why. I've only really got time to do one pickup and I plan to use this scratch plate on it. Which I don't think would work on there, would it? Doesn't really work on there, so. I'm going to stick with the plan. Let's scribble out the line that I drew on erroneously. If I'm ever confused, what I'll do is just scribble over the line that I don't want. If there's more than one line. Right, so that is my body shape. Going to draw on the centre line. So with guitar making, everything comes from the centre line. If we want to mark out accurately, we need a reasonably sharp pencil. Here's my centre line. So 
So one of the reasons I like to make my neck first is because I can use my neck to mark out the body, you see. So but we're going to have the this is this is going to be um I'm going to base it on the Nantucket guitar. So it's going to have one pickup at the back and the neck joint is going to be hidden by the scratch plate that I showed you earlier. The neck joint will be hidden by this scratch plate. I want my neck to join here on the last fret. So it's going to have really excellent access to the top frets. If I line that up, then I can mark out the scale length. So I'm going to hold the ruler level with the nut there. Can't see the nut. Is that an overhead shock? Yeah. Let's see if I can zoom out a little bit. So I'm holding the, the fretboard here level with the nut, just here. I've got my neck all lined up where I want it, in relation to the body, last fret. Now I can mark off the scale length, which was 25 inches. So it's a 25 inch scale. I'm marking it here. Let's get an overhead shot of that as well, Carol. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. It's the rough position of the bridge. I can square it across with this draft and square. I'm going to mark the end of the fretboard here. Can you get the this one? Oh, that is that one, isn't it? There, end of the fretboard. So now this, between that line of the end of the fretboard and this line of the nut, uh, the bridge, this is the space that I've got for my pickups. Well, I'm going to put this on, so I'm going to draw that on as well. And then that gives me this space here for my pickup. So with the Nantucket, because there's only one pick up, we move it slightly towards the neck a bit just to give it a little bit more volume. Um, so the front edge of the back pick up there, I'm going to make it 60 mil from, from the line. I suppose it's 20 mil from from there, 20 mil from there to the back of the pickup. I'm going to put a humbucker on this one. So I'm, if I measure 43 mil either side, 43 mil. That is where my pickup's going to go. I'm going to square this line up a bit as well.
Here's my humbucker template. So I can line that up using the marks that I've made. I do go through this all in full detail folks on the course so don't worry if you're not picking up all this. That's where my pickup's going to sit. On my body template I've also got marked for controls so let's mark those on as well. options on here, I've got volume, tone and switch or I've got my Nantucket is just volume and tone so I'm just going to mark these two Nantucket volume, tone just one pickup I'm going to mark um, the control cavity this hole will be made from the back of the guitar I'm going to mark it on the front just to check the location of everything. We need to make sure nothing's going to um, clash with anything else. So there's our control cavity and control cavity cover plate. So these are a 10mm hole. I can go ahead and drill those and then we can make the hole for the pickup and cut the body shape out. So it's all going to happen quite fast. I reckon in about certainly in less than three quarters of an hour we're going to have something resembling a body. So set your timers folks. I'm going to have a swig of cold tea. I'm going to play the Brighton video. Is that right? How is long it, is it? The Nantucket is it's like a minute, isn't it? Alright. Carol's going to play you the advert for the Nantucket so you can see what we're building um, while I have a no, swig of tea. Going, uh, did you say this is going to have a humbucker? And, and then we're going to make the body. Did you say this is having a humbucker, not a P90? Yeah, so the one in the pictures is going to have a P90s, but this one's a humbucker. Well, I'll be back in one minute, folks. One minute, 90 So, let's start by drilling these two holes. Over to the drill cow. Okay. Can you speak? Okay. Hold on. There we are.
So I'm clamping my pattern into shape, into place. Now I'm going to copy this shape into the back of the guitar. I'm going to go all the way through, but just leave a quarter of an inch. Or six, about six and a half mil. I'll never be able to get that deep in the first pass. So what I have to do, get as deep as I can, then I take the pattern off and I go as deep as I can again. And then I'll check and I'll set the final depth so that I can go all the way through, but leave just six mil at the bottom. So you, you probably won't be able to see much here. Let's see if we can get a better shot. What's that look like? Yeah. Let's do it. So we're going to take just small cuts, maybe um, two to three mil at a time. <laughs> I'll be using uh, extraction to keep it clean. Through. You see that? Just checking that I'm not going too far through. I can see by eye that's 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 still like 10, 12 mil. So I'm still nowhere near deep enough yet. I can continue. Now it uses the actual. Um, the actual hole becomes the pattern now.
deep as I can get with this cutter. Um, I'm going to have to put a bigger cutter in later and finish it off, but for now, that's good enough. Let's do the humbucker next. Oh no, we're going to do the... Um, there's a cover plate for that as well, so we can do that. So the cover plate is just a very shallow hole, the same depth as the piece of plastic that we're going to use for the cover plate. It's going to be the same material as the So here's how we set the depth for that if we change this close up camera. What I can do is put my cover plate material in to that stop. Bring that down so it touches. And then I've set the depth to be exactly right. So I took my cutter down to touch the wood. And then I set the depth to be the same thickness as my cover plate. Don't know if you can see that, but that little gap there is how deep it's going. So it's a very just shallow cut. That is our cavity for the electrics. Let's do the humbucker. So I usually like to put the guitar on the corner for this. I'm trying to do it where you can see it though. So let's see if this will do. I think we can do it there. As long as the clamps are nice and tight, we don't want this moving. Make some slight adjustments. And then tighten the clamps. So as you can see, this is well this is the secret of guitar making that I always say. Look at this cutter close up. Top bearing. The bearing follows the pattern and the cutter's going to cut into the wood. So you can see I've lined it up, just lining it up with the pencil lines there. All I have to know then is how deep to go. So um, it depends on what pickup you're using and all that kind of thing. I do go into all this again, risk of repeating myself. This is all on the course. Um, I'm going to go about 20 mil deep.
might go deep enough, so I'm going to reset the depth. Zero. I'm going to do the last cut down to 20 mil. going to do what we call the ears they need to be a little bit deeper because um, the pickups have got kind of feet that stick out so I need to make these deeper I call them the ears I don't know why they're not called feet I guess humbuckers have got ears not feet so I'm going to go a little bit deeper just on those bits let's set it to about an inch 25 mil deep there But I'm just going to do that little bit at the end. shape out so as I said uh, I think I said this last week um, I get a lot of guys come to the workshop and they say oh I'm making a guitar and they show me a piece of wood and they just cut the shape out um, well cutting the shape out is the easy bit it's it's getting all these bits in the right place to make sure your guitar is going to actually work that's the bit that's important um, it's much easier to work on a big square piece of wood so we put our all our holes, we do as much work as we can before we cut the body shape out. But that's me now, I'm ready to cut the body out. So I'm going to head over to the bandsaw and chop out this body. So we'll get here on the way. thing about the bandsaw then folks is we're going to cut cut it out making sure that we leave the line on we're going to cut it out making sure that we leave the line on <laughs> because we're going to route the profile afterwards okay it doesn't have to be super neat you'll notice that if I go wonky I'll just pull it back and then carry on guard down a little bit for this one.
close enough for rock and roll. Part two is we cut the profile of the router. I've lost it. So we're going to stick the pattern on. Double sided tape. So a lot of these jobs um, with guitar making, a lot of these cutting out jobs is done in two stages. So we do a, a rough cut and then a final cut. In this case we rough cut on the bandsaw and now I'm going to use my router to copy the body template. into our piece of mahogany. So I'm hoping that you're getting the idea folks that it's not as difficult as you thought. Obviously you do need some tools but you don't need hundreds. You basically need a good a decent bandsaw and a router. And then some hand tools. If you're new to the channel, check out my other video, Essential Tools for Guitar Making. Double sided tape, stick it down in between the lines. The tape's activated by pressure, so if I give it a squeeze, I'm going to squeeze it in the vise. <clears throat> the harder we squeeze it, the harder it sticks. Okay, now we can just simply, just the same as before, copy it. And let's just have a look at the maximum depth. What I like to do is to take it down and check the maximum depth with the close-up camera. Hopefully you can see it's nowhere near, um, it's nowhere near full depth yet. That's as deep as I can go. So I'm going to go I'm going to cut that into maybe two or three cuts rather than cut it all at once. I'm going to do it in two or three cuts. Then I'm going to take the pattern off and repeat. Like this. No clamping necessary. Why is that? Because the gripper mat. The gripper mat holds it. I always like to start and stop where the neck is because um, there's going to be a big hole cut out there for the neck um, so if we have any little wobbles it will be hidden by the neck joint hopefully that's the idea anyway so let's do it
Don't need that anymore. Now I can use the body shape as, as a template to continue down. It won't go any deeper than that, which is still not all the way through yet. Young, young bear hacker says, careful at the horns that you don't take your round tie. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you guys can work out what's going to happen next. Can't go any deeper. So we've got two options. We can put in a longer cutter or we can flip it over and use the bottom bearing to finish it off. It's easy isn't it? We don't have to do it all in one cut. We can half and half it again. Which I think I will. I'm going to half and half it. Plug him in. Two times round. notice guys but I was going backwards on these bits there that's what we call back routing the reason I did that was to avoid breakout um, I knew it wasn't going to break out anyway but I wanted to do it to demonstrate sometimes you'll get bits of wood which are a bit flaky and bits of wood want to fall off as the router comes around this way and the, the cutter spinning it can lift chunks off if you go backwards it's much much less likely to happen so that's what I did there I was doing a bit of back routing to avoid breakout. There we are, there's our body shape cut out. Um, so next we can 
cut our next lot. We're ready to fit. We We're ready to fit our neck. Um, well, I don't know. The thing is, if we don't do it today, I can't finish the guitar tomorrow, can I? No. This is why it's way too much to do in one day, really. So we could either we could call it a day there, and then I could fit the neck tomorrow, and finish the sanding and glue the neck in. I'm not going to get the strings on tomorrow, am I? If I do that. The only way I can get the strings on today is if I get the neck glued in today. If we're going to get the strings on tomorrow, I've got to get the neck glued in today. Which means I've still got... I've got to do the neck socket, the neck angle. Then I've got to sand it. And then I've got to glue it. And to be honest, Carol, I don't think I can do all that today. Well, maybe not, though. Sanding is going to be really boring for people to watch. No, maybe you should do that. Oh, well, keep going. But I can't do that and not glue the neck in, you see. I'll do that after the live stream. I could do it after the live stream. Here's what I'm thinking, right? Um, let's have a bit of face. Here's what I'm thinking. Is um, I think we've done really well today to get this far. Our um, neck's made, the body's made, we need to join them together now. So, um, I press the say string it on Wednesday, so you have got that option. It's good enough for me, Darren. We're doing that. So, we're going to stop there then. So tomorrow, guys, I'm going to be joining the neck to the body. That's the main task for tomorrow. I'll also be sanding it, and then there's some final shaping. There's a few bits and bobs. We've still got holes to drill, um, so there's still quite a bit to do. I think um, rather than risk um, screwing it up and boring you guys to death today, We've already done three hours. We're going to stop here, call it a day, and tomorrow, one o'clock, back in the workshop, neck joint is the main job, neck joint. And then, that's a two-stage process, by the way. We have to make a hole in the body, and then we have to um, create an angle on the bottom of the heel so that we've got an angle on the neck. The strings have got to arrive at the right height for the bridge, so... Um, it's not exactly difficult but it needs to be done right and I've been live streaming for three hours I think it's probably time to quit while we're ahead and call it a day there so thank you guys for watching incredible that you stuck with us for this amount of time <laughs> and uh, I, I appreciate your support guys um, have a look at the links in the description um, where you can support us and all that kind of thing yeah um one o'clock's our time guys we always start at one o'clock unless you hear otherwise so um 1 p.m tomorrow same time same place and we'll be carving the neck so does anybody have any final questions before we fade to black No, good. Well, Ian Gamble's just said hello. Sorry, just missed you. <laughs> All right, Ian, you just missed us. You'll have to rewind. Watch again. Um, Watch from the start. So, magnificent effort both. And for anyone interested in guitars, um, Boolean says, I've just woken up. What have I missed? Um, Everything. You missed it. Oh, look. Uh, got a neck. You. Fantastic. And a body. Cheers, guys. Look at that. From my um, that's yeah, well, thanks, well, guys. Rolls in New Zealand. He, he's. he's Keeping his, you know, his two o'clock in the morning job again. It must be three. It must be even later. Um, Roll, you can get some sleep now. <laughs> say thank you, to Diego, our two, two, four, three. We'll let the dogs. All right, thanks for everybody. Cheers, guys. Right, we'll see you, see you tomorrow. One yep. o'clock then. Rock and roll.
artisan's hands shape the wood elbow fashion from the stars like gnomes 